the train hopper. During the construction of Hoover Dam, many structures were built to facilitate the handling of materials. Several of these structures were abandoned after completion of the project. The train hopper was used extensively during that construction and is one of the structures left behind. Tech divers have been diving this site for years. Because the lake levels have receded over 100 feet, this and many other sites are now within recreational limits. The divers on this dive are Bill Bradley, SSI tech instructor, and Bill Ducrow, Patty Master scuba diver instructor, and videographer. The purpose of this dive is to show, number one, that the dive can be done safely within recreational tables. Number two, to document the train hopper itself. The side-slung nitrox bottles were attached for safety and were not needed during this dive. In order to show an exact time frame of this dive, we have added a time clock to the lower right-hand corner of this video. The timer runs continuously throughout the dive, starting at the beginning of descent. The train hopper. Located near the aggregate piles is where the trains would come in and dump the rocks to be crushed and put into the aggregate piles. There is a large, long tunnel that runs under the hopper. The tunnel entrance is 8 feet high and 10 feet wide. The tunnel is 125 feet long from the entrance to the back of the tunnel. To exit this tunnel, you can use one of four access points. Exit 1 is located approximately 90 feet inside the tunnel. It is a 4 foot by 4 foot vertical man-made shaft. You will be able to see ambient light to your right hand side. You can ascend 20 feet to exit the structure. You will see Bill Ducrow do exactly this in this presentation. This is a thrilling dive for the more advanced divers with a maximum depth of 119 feet. This is an advanced dive. Proper training is required. It can be done on recreational tables. However, if you wish to stay longer or penetrate the tunnel, you should have tech training. As our divers begin their descent, they can see the visibility is great. A water temperature of 53 degrees makes this a brisk, but not a cold water dive. Bill Bradley is wearing a dry suit, and Bill DeCrow is wearing a 5-4 wetsuit. The divers reach the bottom of the line at 101 feet in 2 minutes and 22 seconds, giving them a descent rate of 46 feet per minute. On the bottom, they can see the visibility is approximately 50 to 60 feet. They can judge this distance because they can easily see the attached cave line extending 50 feet from the mooring buoy to the entrance of the tunnel. The swim from the mooring line to the tunnel entrance is uneventful. We take note that both divers have a respiration rate of about 11 breaths per minute. This respiration rate is lower than adult male at rest, an average of 15 to 20 breaths per minute. It is clear that neither diver is stressed. Bill Bradley stops at the entrance to the tunnel and shows us his dive computer. We see that the depth is 104 feet. We enter the tunnel at 3 minutes 33 seconds into our dive. This man-made structure is made of concrete and shows no sign of deterioration. The ceiling is 8 feet high with no overhead obstructions until nearly 90 feet into the tunnel. 
It is important to note that our camera has a fixed f-stop and lights and cannot adjust to lighting conditions like a human eye. Therefore, on this tape, we adjusted the brightness inside the tunnel so you can see more clearly. When you see your first overhead obstruction, you make a 90 degree right hand turn. You are now facing the exit point. Bill Ducrow takes this exit point at 6 minutes 58 seconds into our dive. He ascends through the shaft to the floor at 101 feet. Exiting the shaft at 7 minutes 38 seconds. Bill proceeds to the train tracks and films Bill Bradley exiting through one of the remaining three exit points. Bill Bradley exits through his exit point at 8 minutes and 3 seconds of our dive. Both of the divers examine the train tracks before they begin their swim back to the mooring line.
After examining the train tracks, our divers begin their return to the mooring line. The structure is remarkably sound for being underwater for nearly 70 years. The reinforced concrete shows no signs of deterioration. The tracks are still in place and solid. Our divers are now passing over the shaft that Bill Ducrow took as an exit point. Bill Bradley shows us on his computer that we are now at 103 feet at this point in our dive. 9 minutes and 58 seconds of bottom time. The divers return to the tunnel entrance at 11 minutes and 37 seconds. They make a 90 degree right hand turn and follow the cave line back to the mooring point. In just a few fin strokes, you are able to see the mooring line and the hang tank, confirming that on this day, we had around 50 to 60 feet of visibility. Our divers now begin their ascent at 12 minutes and 28 seconds. Bill Bradley has chosen to use a traditional tech decompression model for extra safety. He will ascend to 50 feet and do a one minute deco stop and continue to do a one minute deco stop at 40 feet, 30 feet and 20 feet and finish with a three minute deco stop at 10 feet. Bill Ducrow will do a deep water safety stop profile. He will ascend to 60 feet for two minutes, 30 feet for three minutes and 15 feet for four minutes. The divers were in full visual contact with each other during this ascent and monitored each other throughout the return to the surface. It is interesting to note that both divers maintain a respiration rate of 11 breaths per minute throughout the dive and ascent. This shows that neither diver was stressed. They were comfortable with the dive and comfortable with each other. Side-slung nitrox tanks were brought along for added safety. However, neither diver used them. <laughs> 